Hello, everyone. Welcome to the weekly meeting of Franco Sweater Knitters. A Franco sweater is a sweater you create um, a pattern for on the website franco.com, and it creates a custom fit sweater that will fit exactly the measurements that you put in and using the yarn that you have created your own swatch and have a gauge for. So uh, that said, here are the people who have all knitted a Franco sweater, or even if you're just interested in knitting a Franco sweater, you can come join us and ask questions about it or whatever you, whatever you like. Hi, Sumner. Hi, Frank. Hi, Hi Joellen. Hi, Franco. Hi, Serena. Hi, Frank. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Frank. Hi, Will. Hi, Frank. Hi, Wally. Hi. Hi, Rana. Hi, Frank. Happy birthday tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you gave it away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ron. Uh, Hi. <laughs> yes, tomorrow is my birthday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday to tomorrow. Yeah. I turn 78 tomorrow. Oh, wow. Don't say, oh, wow. <laughs> it's a bang, <laughs> oh, wow. I say, oh, wow. <laughs> well, I thought you were the same age as me. Which is? 75. Oh, nope. Yeah. Uh, Three years I different. you beat. Yeah, you do. So how's everyone doing? Good. Good. I pulled out my hair. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> How long did that take? Um, <laughs> the fourth sock, that's what that took. Ah. <laughs> well, I, I just didn't pull out your hair over the intarsia in the round knitting. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> just kidding. It's just been a little warm up here. Um. Hello, Kathy. Hi, Frank. Is that you? There you are. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi. It's been a while. Yes. A few weeks. I just, I even have a party today, but I said, I'm, we're going to be late. <laughs> I'm tired of missing Zoom meetings. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Hi, Frank. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi Cindy. How's, Cindy, how's mom? Rhonda, that's a hard question. Um, Health-wise, physically, she seems to be doing okay. She's still weak and having difficulty moving around. Somebody has to be with her 24 hours a day. So my sister is um, uh, living there, and then we're going back and forth pretty much every day and being there for several hours Why? my yeah. sister is spelled. And then some days we're just there all day. Mm -hmm. So um, yesterday we were about 12 hours there. So, yeah. And wow. and her memory's going, which that's sad. Yeah. 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 I've been there. Yeah. It's Shame. just uh, yeah, just uh there's there's no way but just through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's tough. What it you is do. Tough. Lots of hugs and kisses. Oh yeah. And, it's and what you do. We've looked at looked at pictures and had the kids and grandkids over and just um, it sounds really funny, but I ordered um, I had Jerry go to Target and get nail stuff to paint her nails when we're there on Monday because she likes to have that done. And so it's yeah. like, okay, this will be Very something important. that she'll like to get a to get a to get a manicure and you know, somebody to touch her hands and, and do all that. It'll be fun. So oh, that sounds to, nice. Mm. She's trying to do things that she likes and cook things and eat, have her eat things that she likes. So yeah, doing that. Yeah. When my mom started losing her memory, mm -hmm. um, now she would always get her hair done, but she always kept her hair really short, like very, mm -hmm. very short. 
um, mm-hmm. she had this thick, thick hair, I, whatever. But um, <laughs> I would pay this. I would pay this hairdresser to go to the mm-hmm. facility to mm-hmm. give her to a haircut because <laughs> she she had a stroke, so she she was in a twenty four hour care facility. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Well, she started forgetting who the hairdresser was, and then she started punching the hairdresser. Oh, oh no! Yeah. Ouch! Yeah. I'm like, oh, you can't punch. That cost me a fortune, Mom. When you punch the hairdresser, you can't do that. <laughs> so I started really tipping the hairdresser. Yes, um, like here, have, have an extra, have some extra. Here, yeah. have a hundred. It's okay. Uh, you'll be all right. Just I still need you to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I I will say, Mom's Mom's much easier than than Dad was. Um, she is just she's very complacent and kind of like whatever you do is kind of fine and that's not the way my mom normally was so it's it's different but it surely makes caring for her easier yeah for sure yeah frank yes i am so excited about your upcoming uh new i don't know if you want to talk about it now oh sure I am Good. so excited. I want to hear too. I even ordered yarn for it. Oh, oh it's going to be a while. <laughs> that is a game, <laughs> Hurry, Frank. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have bad news. Uh, not oh. terrible news. It's still going to be a, it's still going to happen. And I'll tell you what it is in a minute for those of you who don't know. But I had to start over. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. I got almost all the way down to the place where you separate the sleeves and realized I had made the neckline too large. And um, it fit around me like out this far <laughs> because oh, wow. I, I don't do yoke collars. By the way, what we're talking about is I announced last week that I'm working on a new construction of a new style of sweater for the Franco sweater, and it will be a yoke sweater. Um, and the yoke will go from shoulder to shoulder and down around the chest and around the back, but the sleeves will still be seamless set in sleeves architecture. So it will fit better than the, your typical yoke sweater. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. And, um, I have worked it all out mathematically. I know how many stitches to do everywhere and, um, and I spent some time this week programming more. So it's I, I've got it so that I can do it for multiple uh, gauges. Um, any normal gauge, uh, what I call a normal gauge. Um, I even uh, tested it on um, all of the gauges that have been entered so far into the franco.com website, mm-hmm. which was over 800 different inputs. Wow. And um, and I identified about 20 that were put in wrong, <laughs> um, you know, where the people put in the row gauge and the stitch stitch gauge were the same or the row gauge was actually uh, less than the stitch gauge. So it, it's just not possible to knit something like that as far as I know. But anyway, the the website won't handle it in those cases. And and they also didn't work for the yoke sweater. So, um, but I made it work for almost all of the gauges that were not really um, very extreme. What makes them extreme is the ratio of stitch gauge to uh, row gauge, not mm-hmm. how many stitches there are in the gauge, but what the ratio is between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I have started over. And um, I've gotten through the sleeves. Let's see if I can figure out which is what. Let me spotlight myself if I'm going to show something. There we are. Looking good. Very cool. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I've gotten yeah. through the yoke on this one. Oh, let me see if I can. 
and I've just started yeah, right. the the blue uh, body of the sweater. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you what I did differently this time. The last time I um, I started knitting at row one of the ribbing, knitted the ribbing in the round, and then just switched to stockinette and continued in stockinette. Well, it turns out that gives no structure whatsoever to the to the neckline. Oh. And so it just pulled out and pulled out. I never would have thought of that, but exactly it is. And so mm -hmm. this time I uh, knitted, I, I cast on the number of stitches to do the circumference of the neck plus um, one inch. And it's even a little too loose. I think I'm going to have to do it that the, the neckline uh, the ribbing starts at the circumference of the neck and then the ribbing goes into the neck um, because it tends to pull apart anyway. So, but this one's not, uh, this one will be wearable. It's just the other one was so large, it would not, I couldn't even have worn it. So I didn't want to finish a sweater, but the yoke part and turning the yoke into a body that is knit completely in the round with the rows going across the body instead of arcing under the shoulders. And that's the complicated part of the pattern is calculating how do you change a, a, a round that is going arced like this to a few year, rows below, actually quite a few rows below, you're just going straight across the body. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that all can be figured out mathematically, it turns out. And I did it. It looked like it was going yeah. to work, but I didn't finish the last part of the sleeves because I realized I wouldn't be able to wear the sweater. Are you putting short rows in the back of the neck? Yes. Good. I put I put um, a set of three short rows, which is six extra rows. And then I knit a row and then I do three more short rows back and forth. So I get a total of 12 extra rows on the back than on the sure. front. Um, of course, if somebody's using uh, a yarn that's a lot finer, I may have to calculate at what point do we want to do that a third time to add more, you know, because oh yeah, Good different, point. different row gauges are going to give you different neck differences. At the on the yoke part, are you doing the uh, yoke um, increases evenly around? That's uh, that's what I spent this week working on. Um, oh, okay. The originals there is. Let's see if I can do this in a way that doesn't sound like an engineer jargon. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, just hit us with the jargon. We can stand it. <laughs> um, the first one I did was a yoke that needed to have four and a half increases every round. Mm -hmm. We can't do four and a half increases. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'll do nine increases every other round. But you can't do five on the back every time, or the back would get fat and the front would still, you know, Small. it's got to stay the same. So I went to all the trouble of knitting and I, um, with first, first there's four increases on the back and five on the front. Then there's one round with no increases. Then the next time you do the reverse, you put five on the back and four on the front. So you had to keep track of what am I doing? Am I doing a straight round? Am I doing four on the front or five on the front? And it got very complicated. And I woke up in the middle of the night one time this week and I thought, you know what, I bet I could do six and then calculate mathematically um, how to, how often to do a round that is none. And um, I worked it out. You, for the sweater I'm doing now, at four and a half increases per round, um, if you double that, you get nine. If you double that, you get um uh 18 and 18 is divisible by six so you can do um uh, six <laughs> i'm so confused <laughs> it's divisible by three it's divisible by three yes um so you do 
uh, three rounds of six and four, and then the fourth round is flat. Then you do three rounds oh. of six and the fourth round is flat. Well, not all gauges do that. And that's what I had to spend an entire day calculating. How do you know how many rows with increases? All of them with six, three on the front, three on the back. Um, but occasionally doing a row that is not has none because six is you is for all gauges six is really a little bit too many. Yes, yeah. yeah. But that's nine, why a lot too many. Four box. and a half is you know <laughs> four and a half was the right number, and so I, if I did six every time um, in three <laughs> rows, I'd have eighteen. And um, anyway. You can see it gets complicated, but I had a computer to help me and I wrote a computer program and I um, just figured out all the different um, uh, ratios that and how to deal with each one. So, so your, your past history at Google is preparing you for today. Uh, yes. And that's been true all along because, you know, I decided to do a website and um, that is drawn from my years as a software developer doing websites and and software development. And I, and so that's when I learned to knit and became a master hand knitter certified by the TKGA, um, I didn't put aside my programming. I incorporated the two together to create a knitting website. And um, so I, I get to do the two things that I have loved professionally at the same time. That's great. That's nice. Yeah. Not many people can say that. No. No, I, I enjoyed my career whenever I was doing software development. The only part of my career I didn't enjoy was when people would say, oh, you're really good at software, so we're going to make you a manager. And that happened yeah. repeatedly until 1996, um, after 20 years of software engineering, I finally told my boss, I will never manage anybody again. I want to be a software developer for the rest of my career. <laughs> and um, Because I love developing software. and managing is a completely different career it, I know. it's, it's an, entirely it's an annoying different. thing it's it's like wait i'm because i'm really good at this you want to make me then do that which is right. not really yeah. to do it in any way it none right. of it made right. any sense to me yeah. so it's um, a different it's a whole different thing it is yeah. different but see yeah. that's what i really like i love telling people what to do Amen. <laughs> that's, that's, Amen. that's me I, just, I like managing <laughs> Me too. I, I was terrible at it, and I hated it. <laughs> I like mentoring. Yes, and that's that's what I ended up doing. In fact, when I was at Google, I was named one of the uh, senior software mentors. Um, and I have a T-shirt that says software mentor Google. So I was very proud of that. Um, but I, I love mentoring. I love working with people and helping them become better software engineers. Um, but I hated telling them what to do and then checking to make sure they did it and then telling them that they didn't do it. So you need to do it this way instead of that way. And then writing up a report and doing all those reviews and uh, it, all of that. Yeah. Gobbledygook. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just wasn't Funny, I, I spent my entire morning writing up a new set of procedures for newly elected board members of the <laughs> theater that I work at. Uh, um, I, I've just been appointed the operational director, so that's what that's. What oh, I, I <laughs> hopefully oh. that's a paid position. No, no, it's a volunteer. Oh, for goodness' sake! <laughs> uh, also. I, I was I was out doing things while you were talking, but um, I will present to you a swatch I made for a Franco that has fewer rows per inch than stitches per inch. You can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> it can well, I don't know. Maybe it'll work in a regular Franco, but it won't work in the in the uh, yoke. It makes one. a swimsuit cover up. Oh, and that's a Franco, <laughs> really? It really is. <laughs> and and they're 
Oh, because it's so loose. Yes. I see. It, and it says a dress swatch. Also, the uh, the dress swatch that I made that out of oink has an identical stitch gauge and row gauge for that very reason. So those unusable <laughs> gauges were probably my sweaters. <laughs> and figure. one of the mistakes was mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah. I think some, like some were just put in because people were trying out uh, yeah. putting in the, uh, putting in, you know, filling out the forms to see what it would happen. And so people, there were people who put in like one and one and- Oh know, my Lord. Um, but that just means they're playing around and they weren't actually doing a sweater. I just screwed up. I thought I put a five for five, for a four for four inches and I didn't, I put in a five and it totally threw my gauge off and like the pattern spit yes. out and I was like, oh, well, whatever, I'm buying another one. Yeah, and I bought another one. <laughs> you I never have to buy enough. another one, Sumner. If you put in the, something wrong, just tell me. I will gladly change it behind the scenes. I know. It was so much easier just to buy another one. Frank, you're so kind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother me. Well, I, was... I, I say that for everybody, not just people in this I meeting. know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you screw up, you just got to eat it. And I was... <laughs> Yeah, it's true. all right. I ate the steak. I'm good. <laughs> and I ended up with a great Franco out of it, too. So, oh, good. Well, yeah. I'm still waiting for you to start that hoodie, Sumner. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> I got to get over these argyles. And thank you, Will. I got your text. Okay, good. Chat. Thank you. Um, I have finally got to a point where I am significantly proud of how I am going in the round with Argyles. Good. And they really come out stunning. Um, and no drop stitches. Good. Right? Birdie. On zeros. Neat and tidy. Yeah. In the round. Tiny, tiny. I am thrilled. Yay. There's one question I have for Will, but I can take it offline later. Cool. Okay. Yeah, send me an email. Yeah, I will. It's pretty straightforward but um yeah i'm just thrilled with it i love it um mm -hmm. i'm gonna do a couple of these and your hoodie is on deck because this argyle needed to be worked out for chuck's sweater but it's hot out he's not wearing the sweater until yeah. like november anyway yeah. and i could make one in you know i can make one in a month i get no issue with that so yeah, there's just no had to rush. work out the argyle first. Um, dying to make the hoodie. I have in my stash. I shouldn't have found this much Cascade 220, but I don't know what I stash. I I, I got something <laughs> wrong with me, but I have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> you and may have noticed I changed my background this week. I decided to take a picture of my stash and put that as oh, my. Oh, so that's nice. what's behind. Oh, good for you. Is that bagels? So, yeah, I got plenty top? of that in the stash. Is what that bagels the on the top behind you? Wait, I just... you see your... What? Is that bagels up above your head? <laughs> it does look like a bagel, yes. Oh, <laughs> it does no. kind of look like a bagel right above your head. Right above my head is, uh... oh, let me kind see what that yellow, is. Kind of a yellow yeah. yarn, it looks like. <laughs> because, I think it might be a was, it, was it something I said? No, <laughs> it's a, it's no, no, a background. No, like, he doesn't really see it. He took a picture. Now yeah. he has to go uh, look at the back. No, oh, that's not actual his actual thing. background. That's a riot. That's funny. It's this. Oh. Uh, oh. 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 I never wow. would have guessed that. That's funny. You know what that I am funny. dying to find um, is a dress form for a male sweater. Mm. Yeah. Does anyone have one? Like no, I I've seen, seen some, here. but boy, they can be expensive. Really? I, I found them for fifty bucks. Well, not really? a real dress form, just a um, just, just a torso a, uh, mannequin. But a, a real dress form is like two hundred. Yeah. Oh, it was mm. like three fifty. I'm yeah. like that's yeah. that. But ooh, ooh. I mean, so I'm gonna try to hunt one down. 
I wanted the adjustable male torso. Yeah. Form, yeah. Right. Um, for the, cause I certainly make enough sweaters. Um, thought it would be nice to have one. You know what? You live close to Boston. I would I try do. Chinatown. Yeah. I go to the garment district. The yeah. Garment district. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. I do live very close. Yeah. yeah, I'll go down there and check it out. I never I even thought used of that. I love going down there. First of all, I well, they still got some warehouses that they don't even, they're not even, they don't even have a website, but yeah. they're just warehouses of fabric. Yeah. yeah. So, Especially yeah, that's wool. a good idea. Lots and lots of wool. Yeah. Really nice. It was. Yeah, I'll try that. And I have been so busy at work. I have not had a time to do a whole lot of knitting this week. That just yeah. makes me so unhappy. Yeah. I know they pay me, but they don't understand. <laughs> I didn't work. I didn't knit all week either, Sumner. I I had to wind another ball of yarn, and I just never could get into doing that. <laughs> but yeah. I did today, finally. <laughs> Mostly my, my hands hurt from weeding, because we've actually hit our... Our average rainfall for the year uh, last night, over uh -huh. 15 inches of rain already. Yeah. Yeah. We got to be close too. I mean, we are just sopping just, wet. Everything's sopping well, wet. Well, you can, you can bring it down to us in Long Island. We're dry as a bone. We're, we finally were sunny. We saw the sun today um, and I'm walking the dog over the grass and it's just mud. Yeah. Mm. I, it's mm. awful over here is but dry whatever. clay mm. yeah that's a that's a shame yep. just doesn't want to rain out here on Long Island yeah it just it just hadn't stopped I mean, yeah. probably our first sunny day since the first of the year mm. since the first of, no the first of the month so oh, wow. like we we finally saw sun. We're like, wow, what's that? You know? Huh. <laughs> what's all this brightness? Yeah, it's just crazy. I'm, I put out these beautiful flower pots, literally growing mushrooms. Wow. <laughs> Actual mushrooms growing mm. in my flower pots. <sighs> there you go. I'm done <laughs> complaining about that because the rest, I'd rather be wet than dry. Mm -mm. Yeah. Our trees make water. Out here. Yeah, and you're so hot. It's um, the rest of the country's having the hottest days on record, and yeah, you know, we finally, we finally actually got some heat two days ago. But that's it. It's been in the seventies all year. It's been in the nineties all year. All month. Week. So Sumner, I got a question. Yes. Did you figure out the uh, the thing where you had to work the pearl stitches back across on your on your argyle? Yes. What was that? So when you're turning and you're changing the yarn, yeah. When you have to, you're actually picking up a stitch, and you're moving it from the left needle to the right needle. You're not knitting it. You're knitting the next stitch. Well, you're purling. So you yep. purl from left to right, and then you purl around all the way. Yep. So you get to the color change again. Yep. And okay. that was killing me. Okay. But I got it now. It makes sense so, now. And so that's it's what was really beautiful. Yeah. It is beautiful. Like it, when you figure it out. So and it's uh, once you get a rhythm going, it takes a while, or it did for me anyways, to get a rhythm going. But once you sort of figure it out, mm -hmm. it's really fun. Yeah. And the fact Can you show the going, inside of it? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Hmm. Look that at that. So it's neat. perfect. That is yeah. so tidy. Wow. Well, and that's what I mm. needed. So. I was doing it, but it just wasn't tidy. It was, it was, it was loose. Like some stitches were not as tight or neat as the others. So it wasn't, I, I wasn't happy. 
Mm -hmm. um, so this is like my fifth try and I had taken the scissors to some of them. Um, and then I pulled out some of them and saved the yarn. And um, some you said fire too, right? Yeah, I, some I wanted to yes and did a seance, <laughs> but uh, I really think that, and I tell people to swatch, 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 swatch all the time for everything. And this to me, that's how I'm treating it. But. This pair of socks is my swatch on Argyles in the round. You are going to find I, that when you knit it a sweater, it's actually going to be easier than knitting that sock because the diameter of the fabric is larger. The circumference of the fabric is larger. Right. And yeah. I found that having a really small circumference like a sock, it made it just much harder to keep track of what was happening somehow. I don't know why, but that's that was my experience. Anyway. Right. Oh, me too. I mean, that's what been, you know, and I really, I don't know why I just love Intarsia. I would like to make an Argyle sweater mm -hmm. in the round um, that's nice and tight in the round um, that you can wear like three season sweater, like on like a sport weight yarn, right? I really want to make that happen. So I needed to make this happen because I've done argyle socks but they were fair isle so it wasn't traditional argyle like this is traditional argyle pretty much and i do find on the two needles argyle socks that you seam up the back the seam is uncomfortable and it seems down the foot also uncomfortable so i think this will be the comfortable sock that i get to wear and it, it it's worth it you just keep I just got to keep at it sometimes. Uh, I'm a very hands-on learner. Um, I've just got to do it. So I'm just doing it. No matter how much it takes, if it kills me, I'm going to be good at it. I well, as, long as, as long as we're talking about um, Intarja in the round, I have to show you a pair of socks I finished. I would love to see them. Here. Oh, aren't they oh, cool? Aren't they wow. cool? Oh, wow, look at that. Aren't they fun? <laughs> so they're like polka dots. Yeah. Um, like polka dots. And they're just random. I just placed a dot wherever I felt like it. <laughs> as I was oh, my goodness. Them. They deliberately <laughs> didn't match. They um, oh, that's so fun. They were a lot it. of fun. Those are terrific. Yeah. Good job. Well, yeah, good good job. job. I finished my Argyles a couple of weeks ago, and I was thinking, you know, Intarsia in the round isn't only for Argyle. What else could I do? And so I thought polka dots would be fun. Great. Yeah, so I'm getting a little stuck on the, because you, on the purl side, you slip that stitch and you purl the next stitch when you're increasing. But now when I'm decreasing, you slip the other way. So instead of, instead of going from right to left, you'd go left to right or vice versa. Oh. You slip sense? which, yes, you slip the stitch whichever direction you need to go to get to where the color change moved to. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh. Or okay. sometimes, like with these socks, there are rows where you don't slip at all uh, because the once you set up the pattern at a certain point, if there's straight up and down number of stitches, yeah, it goes straight up and down, then you wouldn't slip anything. You just change the color. You just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I just changed the color the other way and then that's my new beginning around. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Son of a big. Oh, that's there a, you go. That's an interesting way to think of it, that you're just changing the color the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, I was just like, I know I got to slip this stitch, but it isn't going to decrease. Yeah. And that's my first stitch of the new round. So that's where I was like, okay, I'll get there. I'll figure it out. Doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm persistent. Um, but 
Yeah, Franco, I have probably three sweaters worth of Cascade 220 in multiple <laughs> right. colors. Yeah. Um, and I do have that lovely boucle that is what I bought to make your hoodie. Mm -hmm. um, and after all of this knitting Argyles on zeros, I think I'm going to be fine on the boucle because I just think I'm going to wear the hell out of that hoodie. It is so handsome. Oh, um, but to make it out of the boucle, I think is, is going to be what I want to do at the end of the day. It's Are you going to do wanted. one in Cascade and then one in boucle or are you going to do I two? think, I think I was going to do one in, in Cascade, um, just to get how the pocket works. Yeah. Because that'll be my swatch sweater. Yeah. Because when I get to the boucle, you can't see your stitches once you've knit them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to have some sort of muscle memory of what are you going to do next. Mm -hmm. Like I love the feel of it, but doing like that pocket, I think is going to create a problem if I can't see my stitches. Yeah, it's going to be cool though. Yeah, it'd be really nice. It's a beautiful sweater. It's worth a try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just love it. And then now after this, <laughs> Chuck can certainly have his Argyle cardigan. <laughs> is Argyle Franco cardigan. Aha. Uh because -huh. that's what this is all about. This is about Chuck's Argyle Franco <laughs> cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, my goodness. I am a piece of work. Takes a village. It does. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I was thinking about what I was trying to describe earlier and got so confused with. And I, I think I can describe it simply so that it's easy to understand. My row gauge calculates at four and a half increases every single round in order to produce a, fra a flat circle. <clears throat> and that's all that can be calculated from, from oh, okay. the, um, the basically from the gauge, you can calculate how, what the increase in the diameter is from one row to the next. And then what is that increase in circumference? And it turns out it's four and a half stitches. If I knit four row, four rounds and put four and a half stitches on all four rounds, then I have increased 18 stitches. But if instead of increasing four and a half stitches per round, I increase six and I do it, for, I do after three rounds, I've got my 18 stitches and then I knit a fourth round that has no increases. And so I've, I've, I've still got four rounds with 18 increases. And so by doing six and then none, you can, uh, you can put the increases in the same location. So you can actually have a repeating pattern that will, will be um, in how many, there'll be three increases. So there'll be four segments of pattern across the front and four across the back gonna look good that will yeah. be nice you could also put one down each sleeve cap so i was just thinking of that yeah if you want yeah if you wanted to do that then you'd have have the two and two and one and one or something uh -huh. like or three and three. yeah right? That right that's right you'd have yeah, three you'd have one and one four across the front four across the back and one on each cap would be eight different motifs yeah mm -hmm. of course that that would depend on your gauge too how many how many increases no it, it turns out you can calculate how many how often do you do a round with no increases if all the others are six? Oh. yeah oh, okay. wow that's some math you got going on. It, it, it was I'm pretty sorry. heavy math, yes. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> That's your trigonometry right there. Yeah. Let me let me see what I can. Oof. Let I'm glad it's you, not me. I don't know. I don't have the capacity.
Oh. Well, that's why it's called a Franco sweater, Sumner, because he that has is. Capacity, <laughs> and we don't. And we don't. We just go, yes, sir. <laughs> Let's see if I can figure out. I wish him happy birthday every now and again to get on his good graces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Happy I didn't say happy birthday. <laughs> Hi, cheese. Are you going to do something special for your birthday? Uh, yes, I'm having two birthday dinners, one tomorrow night and one Monday night. Cool. Um, just like kind of different groups of friends. And um, uh, so, and well, I'm going to have a birthday day. dinner with just one other person on yeah. uh, Thursday night. We went to a really nice restaurant. So I, I'm actually spending about a week celebrating my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way to do That's it. That's amazing. That is. Have you ever been to the French Laundry? Uh, no, I've never been to the French Laundry. Okay. Just because it's, it's my God, it's it got to be, for two people for dinner, it's got to be almost $500, right? Yes, that's without, what I hear. Without the yeah. liquor, so, yeah. Wow. wow. Just Looks like out, out here in uh, the Hamptons, they opened up... Uh, a new restaurant there, and they're charging fifty dollars for grilled cheese. So, oh yeah, yeah, I know. What kind of cheese? I have, found out in I have no idea. <laughs> what kind of bread is it? For I, I mean, what would cost fifty dollars for a grilled cheese? Well, some cheeses are rare. I, not that rare. <laughs> some cheeses are exceptionally rare. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to go down there and find the menu, and I'll bring it back next week. So. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm interested. Yeah. So, I'm, well, we're kind of curious, too. I mean, I mean, yeah. they built a whole bunch of condos there, and they want to sell them for over a million dollars, and it's on, on the waterway, which all of us still want to know where the sewer system's going. And uh, no one bought them because they were over a million dollars. Hmm. Now they're renting them out at four thousand dollars a month. Mm. Oh, that's so, that's pricey. Yep, yeah, it is. I feel like I could be getting more out of my lodgers. Mm. <laughs> well, well, some old market, man, some, some some man's living in a basement apartment out here, and it's eighteen hundred. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's about what well, we when get. When Jerry's not that. very nice, I I make him live in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, all the kids out here in Long Island live with their parents. They can't afford the rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's got it to is. the point where it's just it stupid. is. It's outrageous. Mm -hmm. And Boulder Frank, has have a... laws about it too. You can you can't have more than three people in a household if they're not uh, related. Hmm. Example. Where is that? Uh, what? Boulder. Anywhere really? in Boulder? What's that? Anywhere in Boulder? Yeah, any, anywhere, in, anywhere in Boulder. People don't pay attention to it, but that is the law. Really? I bet that came from the days of the hippie movements when we it, wanted to have communes. And no. <laughs> I I lived sure. in several communes because I was a hippie, and uh, I encountered that oh. somewhere along the way. Yeah, couldn't buy in a town, certain town. I forget which one in Massachusetts when I wanted to move to Massachusetts. Yeah, probably. I've got a two bedroom apartment across the hall. They got five people living there. Yeah. At, at, and down here in Long Island, it's a family. Yeah. It's a family. Uh, where they live, I don't know how they're doing it. God yeah. love them. In Long Island, they, they had an ordinance that you couldn't build apartments no more than 500, and it's already past 1,200 now. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Cindy, did you start to have a question? Yes, Frank, I do. Um, I did the cast on for the uh, transformation sweater, uh -huh. but I'm doing it with, with my gauge, with the pattern that I did. And for the the um, 
charting for the front of the sweater, I need 61 stitches, which I okay. will have after I've done all the increases kind of the, under the arm. Wait, but, what? No. No, you well, have to have 61 but before you do the increases. I know I have to have increases. 61 before. So I don't know, should I, should I <laughs> add a few on the front before up higher and just do a little bit? Because what I ended up with is, is I'm at, when I'm right joining the, the center, I'm at 56 across. Oh. So if mm. I did, and I, and I even, I thought about adding one more in the center when I cast on. So I have an uneven one because you're supposed to have, it takes 61 to do the pattern. So that would make it so I actually have a center stitch. And that's the smallest of the three charts, right? 61? That's the smallest of the three charts, oh. 61. So then it's like, should I add a little bit here or should I move the... The if you move the whole pattern down, it'll be like on your belly, and that won't look right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna be for me though, it'll be for Katie. Well, I won't tell well whoever. I don't but think I'd want to wear with a big butterfly on I my belly. Add, should I just because if it's if I add one in the center to make it 57, then if I just do two increases uh -huh. on the front and don't increase the back that would give me the 61 so that I can actually do the pattern across. Yes. And then right. when I get down here, of course, then it'll be wider, but I'm thinking mm -hmm. that might be what I should do. But I wanted, I wanted to ask, because otherwise it would be down it. And I didn't think it would look that great either down there. Yeah, you, so you you're gonna add four stitches. And what is your gauge? Uh, mm. Let me look it up here. I have- About four stitches to the inch, I guess, huh? It's just about, yeah, it is. It's just over four. It's so like that'll 4. add an inch to inch. your, that'll just add an inch to your uh, chest ease. To the front, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think, I think being a woman also, it'll be fine to have that little bit more on there. And then uh -huh. when I go underneath the arm, of course, I'll, I just won't do the, those two increases on in two places on there, I'll do the one on the back so that I get back to the. Oh, I right see. So you get right to, back to the right amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that sound doable? Yeah, that sounds like it will work. I okay. think. All right. Um, How much ease are you? Do you have to start with? Um, I think I only did the two inches. Well, you, oh, you know, well, then you could also two just two do a bigger ease yeah. and get more yeah. stitches to start with. Oh, okay. I didn't even think about that. Okay. Well, I guess yeah. I could try that too to do a little bit more ease. Because yeah, I think I think I only did the standard two inches of ease. Um, yeah. what's oh, the sweater crazy. number? Uh 1054. Okay. Let me see if I can just add the other fit and then you can compare the two patterns. Okay, thank you, Frank. <clears throat> I never even I never even thought about that. That's why we have Franco meetings, right? So we can <laughs> that's right more than one of us. Yeah. <laughs> talk among yourselves. <laughs> I'll talk among <laughs> yourselves, but don't, we can't talk about Frank because he's listening. So don't do that. I am listening. <laughs> okay. I do oh, have give me the reasons. number again. One zero five four. One zero five four. I do have other kind of fun news that I did. Jerry and I, when we when we actually had a, a day off for today, we went down south about an hour and looked at used pianos. And so, I bought a piano. Oh, I'm so nice. excited! Oh, so it's, very um, nice. It's an it's a, a really old upright, but it's a Steinway, and it sounds beautiful. Oh my and God. I haven't had a piano for more than thirty years, and I was just I was giddy when I was there. It was so fun, and I got to play on all these different ones. I got to play on a big Steinway grand piano. It was fantastic. So, oh my God! But we just got the little upright that will fit up here in the living room and do and. So we're going to have a consider when we're on Zoom meetings? Oh, yes, we could that do that. That sounds like a great I idea. 
I don't know, Wally, if you would think that after you heard me play. Hey, I, hey. I took <laughs> lessons in fifth and sixth grade and then not <laughs> again until a couple of years ago. So though I sing really well, my piano is not that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a tidbit, but, Cindy. Yes. So we got new neighbors. They moved in. They haven't moved in. They live up in the mountains and they want to come down from the mountains. Mm -hmm. Rob Steinway, great grandson. No oh, longer. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Look at oh that. Oh my gosh. Has a New York accent still. Yeah. <laughs> that never goes away. It never goes away. No. Yeah. Well, this was really funny. Um, I had played pianos at people's houses and stuff like that, little bits of just friends. And so I, played different ones, but I'd never compared the sounds mm -hmm. of the same. And so I took the same piece of music and I played it on all these different pianos at the piano store. And it was like, I would start and I'd get a few measures in. It's like, no, I don't like this one. <laughs> and, move on. and the guy got so tickled at me and he said, most people come in and they really don't know what they want. And he said, you actually are looking for a particular sound and a particular feel in the piano. And I'm like, yes, I am. That my voice teacher has a Steinway. You know, he's been a professional voice teacher for 40 something years. And I, this is what to me sounds like a piano. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was really, really funny. And some of, some of the others, I mean, and, and some of them, they were quite, ex mine was not very expensive because it was so old, but some were quite expensive. And I'm just like, no, I don't like that one. And he's like, so why don't you like that one? It's, I said, it sounds funky. And and then he would say <laughs> it's where it was made. And he's like, yes, you know, the Korean pianos or the Japanese pianos or this and that or whatever, they have a very different sound. And um, the really old soundboards of the of some of the older Steinways, particularly from the really old old growth woods it has that big rich sound that yeah. it was just it was so fun that's so that's my new it'll come it'll come next week yeah that's so exciting I'm very, very happy for you i'll show you i finished my um Mobius oh, pack. how did Yay. it work? How did it work? Yeah. So, oh, how oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. That, that is my the mind. coolest thing I've ever work seen. Out. Oh, oh, look at that. God. That is so nice. Oh, wow. So, so, so that many stitches it. worked out, Jenny, didn't it? Look it did. At it, that. It's a tad loose, but it but it's fine. I, if I did it again, I would do a few less stitches. But it's but it is worked out. It's worked out fine. I'm really sort of. I like how that swoop thing it. comes over the top. That just it's it's yeah, kind it of is. like a a cloche that they used it to looks, wear. Yeah, it looks like even a, like in the twenties and 20s stuff. Turban, you know. Jenny yeah, turban, yes. I like it. I that's like it. That's gorgeous. Oh, that's Jenny. great. Are you, gonna, are you gonna share the pattern? Uh, so they they. Um, I might try and write it up. I've never tried writing up a pattern before, so. Um, I'll I'll give it a go. <laughs> okay, good. Do uh, we want to? Because I would I would wear a hat like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah that's would, adorable. I would wear that too. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It just has that style to it. It's really cute. Jump out. The, wi the winter winter areas will love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So yes, very that's very pleasing. beautiful. Yes, yeah, yeah. that is. It is. Yeah. Oh, show us the back out. again. So um. The back. So that, oh, look at that! Uh, yes, yeah, so you oh, can see the, you can see the gradient. So it's you can oh, see yeah. that it's obvious because it's there and it's the same color at the mm -hmm. top. Yeah, wow. isn't that something? So, yeah, because yeah. when you were when you were showing this early on, you were saying it's like where you cast on is really kind of right in the middle of that like yeah. pink yes. area, so right? Yeah, that was is, the yeah. cast on part. Yes, that's the cast on. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's just amazing. Mm. Yeah, that turned yeah. out so cute. I yes, really like it did. It. Yeah, I'm really pleased. You're so yeah. creative. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, so yes, I might have a go at writing the pattern. We'll see. <laughs> please, please do, please do. Yes. I'm gonna head off a little early, everyone. I've got a guest here. Mm. Bye, Ron. See you next time. Take it easy, uh, Ron. Bye, Ron. Uh, Bye, Ron. Bye, Ron. Bye, Ron.
Joellen, what are you working on? You haven't you haven't talked. You've been quiet. Well, <laughs> I've been muted because um, seems like every Saturday, right about Zoom time, the rest of my family all take off to visit and leave the puppy in her kennel, and she's a bit of a howler. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had her on mute. Uh, I'm still working on my knit along with Kathy, and oh, good, I have good. changed the colors a bit and threads that it will be for the Harris Tweed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I was talking to Kathy earlier how it just wasn't working out right, and so I just recounted, and Kathy, I'm nowhere near 89 stitches across here, but I think I've found a great deal of the problem I'm having. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you might not be, it might not be 89. It just needs to be a multiple of six plus the. Right. Well, it, it should have been that. And uh, so therefore, oh, it, I, I, I don't think I did my decrease row. That's what I thought. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, um, Cindy, I have bad news. Um, oh, okay. I added uh, the roomy fit, and you can download mm -hmm. the pattern and look at it yourself. And I took a look at the pattern, and it changed the number of stitches below the the armpits, but it did not change the number of stitches across the chest. It's still fifty eight or fifty six. Well, because it it's it's fitting in the shoulders, right? That's yeah, what it is. That's yeah, that's right. So it increased um, below the arm, below the arms. So it didn't fix your problem. So you're back to the, back to what you were suggesting. I think I'm just gonna add the add the one in the center. So it's the we really do have the center stitch with the with the uneven numbers because uh -huh. that's not gonna goof things up. It just no. makes it easier to count in from the sides. And then I think I'll just do the uh, a couple little more. And so it will increase it a little bit in the front, but I might end up doing the more roomy fit that might work that might work better with it. I'll uh, mm -hmm. look at that and see. But thank you for doing that, Frank. I really appreciate it. Sure. So uh, is it uh, I see it's 56 stitches on the front and on the back um, between right. those two. And if you add one, that's 57, and you need... But I'm not um, going to do it on the back. I'm just going to do it on the no, front. No, so but you need, need five need more, it. right? You, you, so... I need I need four more, because it has to be 61 total. Oh, it has to be 61. Oh, yes, one in the middle and then four, two on each side. Yeah, so I would just do two things of increases, and, and I think I'll, I'll spread them out. I have um, four... For um, chart A, it said to do three inches below the uh, cast on at the neck. Um, the yeah, of course you can you can change that easily enough. That was just my right. guess as to what but, might look but good. But if I do that, that gives me like um, seventeen rows of the of the sleeve coming down this way, so that I can at least have a little bit of space to add those extra few stitches. And uh -huh. I think it'll be, I think it'll look, look fine. Do I just wanted to ask to see, I'm not a math genius like any of the rest of you. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to be sure. I wasn't you ain't talking about me, weird. that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you and me, can, uh, Wally, can be the non-math genius. Yeah, we're the, non the rest I'm, of them can be better. No, numbers and me don't work. <laughs> Um, well, we're in the final minute or two, and so d we didn't all show things. Who has something they'd like to show in the last minute or two? <laughs> Come on, all of you here, and we haven't seen what it, all, many of you are working on. Just one person. Show. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna show really quick. This is the sweater that I just finished. It was it was the knit along one that that. Oh. Um, Oh, how nice. Yeah, did. Great. Oh, yes. nice. That very turned nice. out really good. It was very, very good. That is so that nice. The girl's got oh, gorgeous that hair. Doesn't Thank she? Thank you. Yes. There's that. Wow. So, yeah. 
So it got, it turned out really good. It fit mm. her perfectly. And she was like, oh my gosh, this fits exactly where I'm supposed to. And look at this. And it's like, yes, dear, I made it exactly to your <laughs> measurements for your gauge <laughs> with knitwood, you know? So it <laughs> But uh, she was she was really thrilled with it and it did work out really well. So wow. That's great. This the the butterfly will be for her mother. Well, with that, I think it's time to say goodbye for another week. Okay. So nice, week, so nice to see you all. Bye. Have a good Bye. week. Good night. Bye. Eat lots of cake. Yes, yes. lots of chocolate cake. <laughs> yes. yep. Happy birthday. <laughs> Have a nice birthday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes.